It's time for the Indian Isle Book Club. We want you to be a part of it. Welcome to program specialist Sakura Fuqua. And I love it because every time you guys come here, you have different topics. You're introducing us to so many di different authors and books. Thanks for being here. No, thank you for having me. This is wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Talk to us about this podcast that you've got. This is exciting. And we're, we're going to get to the festival celebrating Central African culture. But let's talk about the podcast first. Yes. Yeah, so the podcast is something we've been working on for a long time. And it's exciting for us as well. Uh, it's called More Than a Place, and it features immigrant leaders in the community and why they consider Indianapolis their home. That's great. Oh, yes. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, I know you've brought some different authors and books here to feature. What, if, what did you bring today? Um, well, we have Good Night Stories for Rebel Girls. Uh, this, uh, there are several books in the series. However, we chose 100 Immigrant Women Who Changed the World. Wow. Yes, and this book is incredible because these are women I've never heard of, and they're short so you can pick it up and put it down yeah. Yeah. as That's you great. please. Good to, good to hear those kind of uplifting, inspiring stories oh, yes. right before you go to bed. Exactly. Yeah, what else did you bring? Um, well, we also have uh, The Immigrant Cookbook. Okay. And believe it or not, I found out about this book on Instagram. All right. Oh, really? Um, it's great for those cooks out there and because there's such a diverse array of uh, recipes. Okay. And so some of these recipes are from the Middle East, from Central America, from yeah. Mexico, yeah. Africa, Asia. So it's great for those summertime gatherings um, in Indiana. That's great. Yeah. And, uh, Africa, Amazing Africa. That's yes. Interesting. Talk to us about that one. Um, you know what? I love this book because of the vibrant colors. But more importantly, it breaks down each country in Africa and explains some of the traditions Ooh, and nice. cultures. And so I take this as an opportunity to read with my children yeah. so we can all learn together about um, a continent we don't know much about. That's great. Um, and a, a fact about this book I would like to share is that when we get to the Central African Festival, this is one of the book giveaways that we have. Oh, cool. So you're going to want to come early yeah. and get your book before all copies are taken. I'm an Atlas nerd. I, I just want to take a look at this. So, yes, it's yeah. definitely for yeah. you then. Atlas look. nerd, I would love yeah. this book. And uh, we got one more, Where is the Congo? Yes, yeah, so Where is the Congo? I think the title is pretty self-explanatory. However, we have a growing uh, population of Congolese in Indianapolis. And so for me to understand um, the culture and some of the history, yeah. because history can be a bit daunting sometimes, sure. this book easily broke down um, the history and explained a bit why our Congolese community is growing in Indianapolis. Wow. I yes. love it. This is incredible because there's always an opportunity to learn. And I know you and Ryan were just talking about the podcast. So many free resources. Available. Exactly. And the festival that you have is coming up as well. Yes. Yeah. Um, so about the festival, it's uh, the Central African Festival happening on July 1st. Uh, at the Central Library from 1 to 4 p.m. Okay. And this, uh, there are many countries in Central Africa. However, we are featuring uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, or okay. DRC, yeah. uh, Rwanda, and Burundi. Okay. And we're doing this through performances. We have Grace Choir, based in Indianapolis. They're phenomenal. Um, their music is so soulful. Mm. Um, and we have uh, Ingoma Sound from uh, Dayton, Ohio, okay. traveling here to be with us. And they are a traditional Burundi drumming band. That's great. Um, and they're just so theatrical. They just draw you in, and they want to make you celebrate the festival. Oh, awesome. Love that. And lastly, we have a Rwandan dance troupe. OK. And in addition to all of that, we'll have vendors sharing information. We will have crafts for children. Yeah. Um, and we will have uh, people selling their crafts as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, go find that podcast more yes. in a place and then go to the Central African Festival, July 1st, 1 to 4th. Oh, July 8th, July I'm sorry. July 8th, I'm sorry, from 1 to 4 down there. Um, thank you so much for no, being here. No, thank you both. It was great. Very yes, much. Thank you. So much fun. Bye. Still to come, our friends from the YMCA are going to teach us about how your family could win $2,000 nice. in their summer bucket list challenge. But first, here's everything that you can enjoy in beautiful Gatlinburg, Tennessee this summer. Take a look. It's the perfect time to start planning your summer getaway to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and our next guest is giving you the chance to win a free two-night stay and all-access pass to Gatlinburg's world-renowned attractions. Welcome to Marissa Rios from the Gatlinburg Convention and Visitors Bureau to tell us more about what you and your family can do there. Hi, Marissa. Hi, Marissa. Hey, guys. Hi, good to see you all. Great to see you as well. So you've compiled the ultimate list of things to do this summer in Gatlinburg. What can you tell us? Yeah, I mean, we are always busy here in Gatlinburg. There's so much to do every single season, so it's 
it's never ending here for the family. Uh, some some of the things we got going on, we got 4th of July coming up and that's a huge event for us. And so we kick off at 12.01 in the morning with the first parade in the nation. It's really early, but it's definitely worth it. Our Grand Marshal this year is actually gonna be a few members of the Harlem Globetrotters. So that's a well-known name. We're super excited to have them. A lot of the floats, a lot of our bands joining in. And then throughout the day, we have more stuff going on with our River Raft Regatta, where you have these little uh, river rafts that you make and you float them down a little pit river and you get to race them see who has the most creative one see who wins it's a really great family event and then that night we kick off with our big fireworks show from the space needle so all around it is a big day uh, and that's something we prep for all year long but we always have something going on we also have our smoky mountain tunes and tales uh, and where we have our storytellers our musicians every single night in july coming out and they're kind of telling the stories dating back all the way to the 1800s of the Smoky Mountains. And so it's so much fun to watch. The families always have a good time with it. Yeah, a lot of family fun. The regatta sounds like a lot of sounds awesome. fun too. And so we also understand the summer music lineup is also really good this year, Marissa. Who do you have playing? Sure, we have, uh, like I said, our Smoky Mountain Tunes and Tales, and then even up at Gatlinburg Sky Park, uh, we have some music in the mountains going on up there. So they always have some good bluegrass music going on. And even into August, we have our Gatlinburg Music Festival as well. So there's always so much going on. You know, we always have so many different bands, musicians, uh, just around here in the region as well. Yeah, year round, like you said, but let's focus a little bit more on the 4th of July because still enough time to plan that getaway if you'd like to go there. So what's going on, Marissa? Sure, it's super jam-packed. Like I said, we kick off with the first parade in the nation, 12.01 in the morning. Uh, we have a line of floats, bands, you name it, going all up and down the parkway. And thousands of people attend this. It's a top 10 parade. You don't want to miss it. And we have that river after Gata, like I said, too, where you just race these different, you know, unmanned floatables down the Little Pigeon River. And so it ends at Ripley's Aquarium. And so we see all the kids get so excited as they're watching down the creek. They're watching their little floatables go down. Uh, and we see who wins, who has the most creative ones. So that's a fun activity and then you want to rest up a little bit come back out for the night we have that really big fireworks show uh and then it just it's an amazing day it's it's a never-ending day we'd like to say our friends almost go every yeah. year you said you've been as well i have i've been yeah. in the winter doing the whole cabin <laughs> thing yeah, in the nice. mountains but i have to go in the summer so thank you for telling us all those fun things to do yeah nice. i gotta get down there yeah. marissa thank you so much for uh sharing a little bit of gatlinburg with the good people of central indiana thanks a lot thank you we'll have more indy now coming up after this